Hi there, okay, in this video, we are going to do the handle and the lid of this container. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to use folders in this and be able to mask each of the different materials using a folder. There's three different materials in this section. Uh, there's the lid, which is gonna be the same as the base. And there's going to be the handle wire and the grips on the side here which is going to be just metal and then there's going to and then there's the handle which is going to be wooden obviously it's all going to be old decrepit just like the bottom um, so let's get started let's just hide the main body by clicking that little button there Bing. so it's gone we've got full access now to this part of the mesh which is cool click on the lid uh, texture set here let's just get rid of that layer we don't need that and you can see if we look close, we've got the ambient occlusion already baked in, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's all working quite nicely. And you can see the ambient occlusion working well there because this part of the mesh is inside the base. It's baked this sort of ambient occlusion on the, on the outside of it, which is nice. Okay, so don't worry about that if you see that you're not going to see it anyway right then so um, you can see the polygons in this mesh now could probably do with a few more but you know it's fine for this purpose and looks pretty good at a distance anyway so let's just create three folders and these this is the folders here go one two three and we're going to name them we're going to call this bottom one lid this middle one wire because that's what it's going to be sort of and then the top one handle and within this lid I might split this off with this actual handle it's itself so um, yeah we'll do that later actually we'll mask it out okay so for each of these we're going to create a black mask so let's add a black mask add a black mask and add a black mask to each of the folders uh, click on your black mask like this and we're going to go to that polygon fill and we're going to make sure that this is set to white and we could even go to 2d 3d like this Let's bring that back into view let's bring this down so i can see it Right, we're going to select this is the lid so all polygons that are lid okay that's selected little tip here you can see in the um, mask here that it has selected it but what you want to do is just add go back to this again add a fill layer this is just temporary make sure it's in that folder uh, and change the color of this to red there you go and now you can see what parts of the mesh has been selected and which parts hasn't. Can you see it? I've missed the edges. So that's a really good tip there. Um, so let's carry on doing that again. Let's go back to our mask and we've got our mesh. You know, I can select by by triangle, by polygon fill and by mesh fill. So I can select all of that and it will select the entire mesh and fill it, which is pretty cool and I want to separate the handle as well which is that piece there so there you go that's our mask for our lid done so let's go up to the wire add another fill layer here make sure it's in the wire folder we can close that now that's the benefit of having these folders you know if you've got a lot of uh, layers in in each of your materials here you can just hide them away so it gets less confusing um, okay, so in this, we just make this, I don't know, another different color. Click on dynamic, make it green if you want to. And then we're going to go in here, select the mesh, and we're going to do the handle. No, nope, that was wrong. Undo that, control Z. We're going to select the wire. So it's that part, that part, two rings. And what's this? These parts here, that's done. I think that's the end of those. Okay, so that's it. So we've got all the wire masked. Let's shut that. Open this. Another fill layer. It keeps going on the top. Bring that 
down. And for this, we're going to select the wood, but for the handle, so we're right, going to select the handle mesh select. Let's actually let's just change the color of this so we can see it. Dynamic, make it blue, something like that. I'm trying to do as quickly as possible because I know I've been um, accused of being a bit slow in the past. So I'm trying to whiz through this so that um, you can you can just do it at your own pace. And if you and if you get to a point where I've gone too fast, just click pause and then you can continue. Uh, okay, so back up to the mask, uh, select. Okay, so there we go. That's all our masks set up for each of our different materials. That's pretty cool and very easy, very quick. Thanks to Substance Painter's awesome uh, user interface sort of functionality. Okay, so where do we start? Let's start. Let's turn this back to 3D now. We don't need it on like that anymore. Can we more real estate on the screen here? Let's move this down a bit. I'd like to see what I'm doing. Okay. In fact, you don't, you know, you can have your substance set up however you want. Okay, so now let's start with the handle. Boom. This is just going to be some sort of wooden beach sort of handle that you would naturally find on these sort of objects. So. I think we've got a material that we can use for this. Let's have a look. Uh, leather. Oak veneer. Now we don't have veneer. Old knotty. Let's try that one. Let's just drop that in there. Let's turn off the blue. <coughs> Okay, that's sort of interesting. First thing we're going to do is turn that to triplanar so it blends it a bit better. Yeah, the ends. We might have to separate the ends and do that separately. That's interesting. Okay, so let's just have a look at this. I think I'm going to turn off the height. Yes. It was way too much. I could probably adjust adjust the height. Height range. Let's just see if we can adjust it here. Because we quite like the height. Um, but it's just a bit in your face. So we can adjust it slightly. And we'll pull it down. Like that. That's quite interesting. We do want a bit of ah, oh, I quite like that. Yeah, cover that with dirt and gunge, and a bit of wear and tear. I think that would work quite well. Okay, that's it. I'm going to leave it at that for now. Let's just go up here and play with some of these. Let's uh, offset rotation. So we can mask these out later, perhaps, and do a separate texture for the end. It should be sort of circular as if it's been cut like a twig or something or split as if two halves have been put together, something like that in reality. But, you know, it's entirely up to you. I might just cover it with dirt so you probably won't even notice it. We'll see how we get on. Um, OK, so now I'm just going to play with these values. That's where the triplanar comes in. You can you can adjust it so it's a soft, lot softer, or quite a hard, hard one there. So let's just bring it right down. So sort of soft. I quite like that knot being there. Actually, it's quite cool. You can, also, you can adjust all of these settings to make it look as best as you, the best it can be. Oh, that's pretty cool. So that hides the join a little more. Okay. It's the way triplanar works. It literally speaks, you know, it does what it says. It projects the image from three different angles onto this this um, object uh, and blends between the seams where it projects. And that's why you get a tr sort of a blend on the seams, which is really clever. Okay, so let's move on 
to the base layer of our wire handle for the handle here. This fill layer in the wooden part, can, we can delete that now. So we can just select it and just press delete to get rid of it. Close that up. All right, we're on to our wire. And I'm just going to give it some sort of bare sort of metal here. Um, nothing shiny, sort of, because I want it to be sort of tarnished, if you like. Uh, steel rough, maybe. Let's try that. Let's drop that into the wire folder. Dunk like that. Let's move it above the green. So it'll show up. There we go. Instantly. That looks cool. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, and then for the lid, let's get rid of this fill layer. We don't need that. Delete. For the lid, we're going to copy. Now, this is a thing. Okay, watch this. I'm going to bring on the main body here, go back down here. We're going to get that. We're going to copy layers because there's a lot of layers in there. So we're going to copy all that. Copy layers. We're going to go back to our handle. We're going to go to our lid here and we're going to paste layers down like that. You can see it kind of works. We need to move that lid back up first. Yeah, and then we need to move the machinery into that layer. There we go. So as it just covers, we need to get rid of that fill layer. Now, like that. And now you can see my lid is pretty good. There's a few things in here that we need to get rid of. We don't need the logo again, so we can get rid of that layer. And we don't need these numbers, so we can get rid of that layer. And we can play with that some more a bit later. But yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. There's a lot of dirt on there, so we need to play with that. Is it that one? Yeah, so this layer here, this generator is causing too much dirt on the top for my liking. This is too much. I don't like it, it's too much. I might put a custom one on there, so I might get rid of that actually altogether. So I'm going to get rid of this dust layer because I'm going to put my own on specifically for the lid. And there we have it almost. OK, you can see the handle. This is what using sort of these materials and smart materials are like. It's very clinical looking, uh, but I'm pretty sure in let's close that and the handle. Let's add, let's add a smart mask, actually. Let's see what we've got here. A bit of dust. Um, I want some, I want, what I want is this kind of rust, uh, edge rust. Let's try that on there. This mask editor is too extreme. We can probably get rid of that one actually. Well, let's just remove effect. Go back onto this one. Let's, let's focus on this. In fact, let's bring that back because it might come in handy. Let's just focus on this. old you know it shouldn't be as shiny as that Just putting on a layer of grungy dirt onto this metal um, handle part. 
don't want it too extreme. I can see this is the same thing that's happening as before. It's giving me these values, but I want it more up around the top, less down here, because this is where it was probably sort of grabbed if it was grabbed, and it's just way too much down there. So it's not giving me what I want really. So I might have to modify that. I'll, I'll do some more work on this with freehand because I'm not completely happy with that at all. So more work, especially in around here. Uh, more work on this lid because that's not right. Uh, so we've got to play with that. And certainly some work on this here. So let's just have a go at doing this. It's just we want some real dirt on this. Uh, it is dust, subtle, dust, stain, dust, dust, soft, dust, dirty. Okay, let's try that on this layer here. Boom. Okay, that's interesting. Mask editor. Boom. <laughs> shiny dirt is not shiny so we need to roughen that up yes you want it to contrast against the wood so maybe we should bring the wood up a little bit um, yeah it's fine <clears throat> Okay, the other thing I want to do to this is I want to give it another layer. Uh, we're still on the wooden handle here. I'll give it another layer. I want to give it a fill layer now. I want to give it a paint layer. I think it's just called a layer, but I call them paint layers as I mentioned before. And with this now we can, you know, we can paint all over this and use the various uh, material elements here let's turn off metal because it isn't metal i don't want to add color for now i'm just going to add some height i'm going to add some damage to this uh, let's just try it this way yes there we go that's pretty cool it adds us so much more character when you start doing stuff like this. It just transforms it pretty much. Because it, it's, it's not so much around there. It depends if this wheel, this handle can turn. Uh, maybe it can. and be a lot more damage where the sort of protrusion, you know, if this is hitting the side of this canister all the time, there'd be, there would be damage on this thing quite a lot and maybe some sort of flatter 
Could be a lot, maybe. No, not like that. Yeah. Just gotta be careful you don't overdo it, that's the thing. Let's go to this side, do the same over here. To, to change your brush size, just hold control and right mouse and you can change the size of it. If you go up and down, it changes the, the uh, intensity of the brush. If you hold the left and go up and down, it returns the orientation. If you go right and left, it again changes the intensity, the flow of the brush. You can see it changing up there on the top left. Okay, so. it down because it's old now it's not um, as bright and luminous as it was it's got dirt all over it there'll be a layer of, of grunge and dirt so you know substance lets you change all this stuff and you really need to get in deep and um, and do this kind of thing change the contrast no, I'm not sure about that bring the contrast down actually and then the luminosity down so it looks a bit more worn I'll change the colour of this dirt in a sec. There you go, that looks more natural, a lot more natural and a lot more realistic than what we had before and I actually quite like that. So I'm going to say that's done for our handle but you can you can work into that as much as you like and play with it you know make it your own um, if you want a different material even you can do that but I quite like that damaged wood look okay now let's move on to this lid let's clean this up a little bit and work some in some into this so this rust layer now is needs adjusting because it was set up really for the uh, for the for the base you can see my uh, here. In fact, this paint layer could probably be taken out because that's what I put in and that's kind of why. Yeah, let's just take that out for a minute. In fact, let's turn the height off for this because it's too too much too intense for that um i like the handle though that's looking pretty cool okay time to add another fill layer and we're gonna add and change this color so it's uh, kind of the rusty color that we've seen dirty rusty color okay now we're going to change this roughness so it's not so rough that's cool it's all over and we're going to add black mask i'm going to add a generator There we go, that's working pretty cool. So that's now in the areas of where the ambient occlusion lives. So the ambient occlusion is working well here. That's looking pretty cool. I'm not sure about this handle still. It's Okay, so let's just go back to this handle. So that's it. I'm going to stop there. And what I'm going to do is work on it a little bit more using what you've just learned what you've just seen i'm going to add some more details into this and then i'm going to show you the end result so i'll see you in a second 
when I've finished it because this kind of work the detail takes a long time to add and it's kind of adding a personal touch to your object and if I stay on screen doing this it could take you know a lot of time um, I might fast forward it I might put it on time lapse but um, I will record it and um, I'll show you the end result but it's looking pretty good so far so I'll see you in a moment Okay, that's it I'm gonna leave it there um, I hope you followed along and if you did it looks something like this um, uh, you could spend many many hours working on this uh, making it better making it refining it adding the detail adding the layers using the procedural in combination with your own artistic skills adding the the personal touches the history you know you could spend a lot of time on this and I've shown you a lot of techniques that you can use. So I hope you found that useful. So I'll see you in the next video.